Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, today we are going to solve some examples uh, to give you an idea about how to tackle problems related to uh, the subject of magnetic force on a charged particle. We start with this example here. It says at one instant an electron, it's important to know what is the charge, an electron is moving in the xy plane. So my, my electron is moving in the xy plane. The component of its velocity being vx equal 5 10 to the power 5 meter per second and vy is 3 10 to the power 5 meter per second. So if I want to write its velocity as a vector, I have to write the component 5 10 to the power 5 i like this plus uh, 3 10 to the power 5 j meter per second. That's the, the units for the velocity. That's a two-dimensional problem, okay? The velocity is in, is in the plane, in the x-y plane. A magnetic field, B, is given by point A, this is the magnitude, and it is in the x, in the positive x direction. So it is point A, uh, I, Tesla, like this, okay? That's B, okay? Is asking at that instant, is asking at that instant, because maybe at another instant the velocity, will, the component will be different. But at that instant when he gives you this velocity, components, what is the magnitude of the magnetic force? So he's looking for the magnetic force on the electron, okay? And you know, Lorentz force, the equation for the force, magnetic force Fb, equal Q V cross B. So you know this from the concepts, when we are de dealing with the concepts, okay? So this formula here is very important. You notice that to have a force on a charged particle, and our charged particle is Q here, it's an electron, so I know the charge of the electron. A v is given to you here, and B is given to you, and the, uh, I want the magnitude of the force. So let's calculate the force uh, as a vector. I hope you know how to do the cross product of these two. So I'm going to do now for you V cross B. Only, yeah? I'm just going to calculate this. So V is 5 and to the power 5i plus 3 and to the power 5j cross uh, B, which is 0.8i, like this, okay? So we do the cost product. Now we come on the side here and remind you about the cost product, okay? The cost product is something not easy, all right? So you have to, there's some rules, uh, and the, the, if this is uh, ijk, let me put the unit vectors here, i, j, and k. These are called the unit vector along the x, y, z directions, okay? You know that a, i cross j will give you plus k, okay? So i cross j will give you plus k. As you rotate counterclockwise, you get the other uh, unit vector. I and J cross J will give plus K. And J cross K, again, we are moving here counterclockwise, will give you plus I. And K cross I will give you plus J. Okay? All right? So this is important to know. Huh? If you go the, the opposite clockwise, uh, for example, J cross I will give you minus K. And I cross K will give you minus J. And K cross J will give you minus I, okay? So if you rotate counterclockwise, it's plus. If you rotate clockwise, it's minus. And you should know that I cross I is equal to J cross J is equal to K cross K, and these are all equal to zero, okay? All right? So these are, because the cross product actually gives you the sign, and the sign of the angle between I and I is zero, and sign of zero will give you a zero. So these are all zeros, okay? So let's apply this rule here, okay? So I have, uh, I have I, I start with the first vector here, component, I cross I, and I cross I will give me zero, okay? So this is equal to zero. I don't write it down. And I have J cross I, and J cross I will give you minus K. So this give me minus, there's a minus sign. So 5 times 0.8, is 1.5, okay, uh, uh, here, j cross i is minus k, 
uh, one minus one point minus two uh, minus two point four minus two point four and to power five and there will be a k here you need vector k because it's a vector cross product will give you a vector okay while a dot product will give you a scalar we are talking about vectors here okay this this is the answer for v cross b okay now let's calculate the force now fb so fb is q the charge of the electron we know it eh? is minus 1.6 and to power minus 19 you have to put the sign of the charge because electron has a negative charge talking about an electron here okay times minus 2.4 and to power 5 k okay this is a scalar and this is the vector so i give you a vector at the end that's why at the end you get a vector the minus with the minus will give you a plus and the answer will be 3.84 3.84 and to power 5 the power minus sorry here minus 14 because you have a 5 and, and 19 minus 14 uh, k Okay, unit vector k, and you put a newton here. The units for uh, the units for the, the the magnetic magnetic force. Force is in newton. Okay, so this is the answer here for that uh, for this question here. And it's important uh, this problem that I solved now. It's important to remember this rule here. Okay, this rule. Uh, if this was uh, uh, the, the, so, this is the final answer. Okay, so my my force will be along the z-axis. This is a k. I, J, K, I, I is along the X axis, J is along the Y axis, and K is along the Z axis. You notice that the force is in the Z axis, okay, along the Z axis, and it is a positive Z axis, okay? Uh, and it is in the play, uh, the, actually the, uh, 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 the force should be perpendicular to the plane formed by V and, and uh, V cross B, okay? V is in X, Y plane, B is in the uh, X, X axis, and therefore, the v, v and B are in the XY plane, both of them. And the force is along the Z axis. It's perpendicular to the plane formed by these two vectors, okay? This is very important to know. This is the rule of the cross product. Now, if this was a proton, if this was a proton, then you put a plus sign here, and this minus sign will not cancel, so there will be a minus sign here, there will be minus k. The only change will be the direction here, but the magnitude will be the same if we are dealing with a proton. Here we are dealing with an electron. Okay? So this is how you would solve. Please remember this rule here for the cross product. Okay? Very important rule. Thank you. Okay, let's look at this uh, second example of a magnetic force on a charged particle. It says, what, a, what magnitude of a uniform magnetic field. So he want uh, the magnitude uh, of a uniform magnetic field uh, applied perpendicular to a beam of electron moving at this speed. See, 1.6 to the power 6 meter per second is required to make the tra uh, electron travel in a circular orbit of radius 5 millimeter. So, first of all, this is an electron, okay? A beam of electrons. It's important to Note that these are electrons. Let me now uh, show you here. <coughs> uh, this is an electron, a negative charge. And that charge, that electron is moving with the velocity V in this direction, let's say, in a, in, in a magnetic field, which is uh, inside the board, OK? My son, can, can you tell me what is the direction of the force on this electron? OK, we have to use the right-hand rule, OK? You do like this, V cross B. B is inside. The force is upward, but it is a negative charge, so the force will be downward. Okay, you change the direction of the force when you have a negative charge. So the force will be in this direction, and this electron, actually, this beam of electron, we are going to move in a circle of radius r, okay, of radius r. And he's, re he's asking, uh, he gave you the radius, but he wants the magnitude of the magnetic field. This magnetic field here, you want its magnitude, okay? The magnitude of magnetic field, okay? So, uh, this force actually is directed toward the center of the circle, okay? This force should be toward the center of the circle. So, my circle is not drawn uh, correctly. I have to draw it correctly to make sure that my center is here. So, this is uh, approximately, this is what is going to be uh, your, my, my, the shape of the, 
orbit, okay? It will be a circular orbit of radius r. When the electron comes here, the force will be, this is called the central force. This force is always toward the center. So let's uh, apply uh, the, the force, magnetic force that we have seen, Q, V cross B, remember this? That's Lorentz force, okay? Uh, as, as a vector. In magnitude, my force will be Q, V, B, sine of the angle between the V and B. But you can see here, as they are talking here in the problem, uh, uh, perpendicular to the beam of electron moving. So my magnetic field is perpendicular. So the angle between the angle theta here is actually 90 degrees. So this will be uh, Q, V, B, okay? Theta in this problem is 90 degrees. So that's why you get a circular motion. Otherwise, if the angle is not 90 degrees, remember the, the, the motion will be uh, helicoidal, okay? Helix, okay? So this is the force. But that force actually is, since you have a circular motion, we know from physics 101 that this is m v squared over r. Our r is the radius of your, of your uh, circular path, okay? Circular orbit. So this v will cancel, and then you can find the magnetic field, which is m v over q r, okay? Q r, okay? That's the magnitude of my magnetic field. And now you can just have to put the numbers to get a B. So if you put the numbers, the mass of the electron is 9.1 10 to the power minus 31. You don't need to, me uh, to memorize this number because it will be given to you. 9.1 10 to the power minus 31. Then V is given to you 1.6 10 to the power, 1.6 10 to the power 6 meter per second. You have to use SI units. And the charge of the electron is 1.6 and to the power minus 19. We don't put the minus sign here because this is actually the magnitude of the magnetic field. Uh, magnetic field, uh, we, are, we don't care about the sign here, but be careful here. In this, when you put this Q here in this case, you have to put the sign of the charge, whether it is positive or negative, because it's important. Uh, positive and negative charge, the force will be uh, changed. Eh? You change the direction of the force when you go from a positive to a negative charge. We have seen for the proton and electron here, the force, if this was a positive charge, the force will be upward, okay? Since it's a negative charge, you change direction. So it's important, the sign of the charge here, but here it's not important the sign of the charge because you are looking at the magnitude of the electric, the magnitude of the unit of the magnetic field. The radius is given by 5 millimeters, that's 5 to the power minus 3, Meters, you have to change this to meter, and if you do the correction, uh, the, all the uh, calculation correctly with, you, with your calculator, of course, you get 1.82 10 to the power minus 3 Tesla. 1.82 and to the power minus 3 Tesla. That's the answer for this question here, okay? It's important to, uh, to, to notice uh, that we write uh, QVB because we have an angle of 90 degrees, and that's since the, this is a circular motion, this is MA. The acceleration and the acceleration is red. Uh, we have a we have a radial acceleration, so it will be m v squared over r. You cancel one of the v and you get the equation for the magnetic field. And you just put the, the, the numbers given to you and you get uh, the magnetic field in Tesla. Okay, that's the units for the magnetic field when you use SI units for all these terms here. Thank you. Okay, my son, this is the, the last example related to magnetic field on the charged particle. We have seen the previous two examples, and this is the last one, number three. It says an electron, E, the charge of the electron here, and the proton, P, we call it P, to, to differentiate between them, electron and proton. Remember, the electron and the proton, they have the same charge in magnitude, but the, the, the electron charge is negative and the proton charge is positive, okay? Are moving in a circular path, which means the velocity and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. Again, okay? Uh, with the same speed, they have the same speed in the plane that is perpendicular to the uniform magnetic. You see here, so the speed is perpendicular to the to, is perpendicular to v to b. V is perpendicular to, to to b, and therefore you get circular paths. What is the ratio of their of their periods? I want the ratio T e of the electron over T p. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, the period. So, uh, as you remember, I hope you remember this, that the period of motion for a circular motion is 2 pi r over v. That's the distance, one circular, that's the circumference of your circle over v. 
So distance over, over speed gives you time, okay? And that's the period. The period is the time to make one ro revolution or one rotation, okay? It's a circular motion. Remember, this is a circular path, okay? And uh, if I, I hope you remember that Q, VB, is, uh, is M, V squared over R. This is, uh, you, know, you, know, you know this, huh? So what R, in this case, will be M, V over QB. I'm going to get rid of this R from here by replacing it by this value here, okay? So I'll have 2 pi over V. What is R? R is M, V over Q. B. I get, I'm telling you, I'm getting rid of this R here by using this fact here, okay? That's, that's Lorentz force, QVB. There should be a sine uh, theta here, but theta is 90 degrees, so sine 90 is 1, equal mv squared over R. You have seen this in the previous example. And you get R from there. You put R here, mv over QB, and, you, and the V here will cancel, and you get the formula for the, the period, eh? m over QB. The force... So I'm going to write, to write this equation is important. So the period of rotation is 2 pi m over q b, okay? That's the period of rotation. You can find the frequency if you want, is which is 1 over the period, is q b over 2 pi m, okay? All right? That, that's the frequency uh, if, you, if they ask for the frequency. But now they are asking about the ratio of the period, not the ratio of the frequency. Uh, so I'm going to write... T for the electrons, okay, the period for the electron is 2 pi, the mass of the electron over Q, B, okay, Q, the charge of the electron, okay, that's the, that's the charge. And the period for the proton will be 2 pi, M of the proton over Q times B. Now, uh, they are both of them in the same magnetic field and they are moving at the same speed, okay. So, so I, 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 you notice that the period actually doesn't depend on the speed, okay? It does not depend on the speed, okay? It depends on what? On the mass of your object and the charge and the magnetic field that you are. Since they, are, they have the same charge and they have the same magnetic field, they are in the same magnetic field, so the period depends only on the mass. And you notice, so, uh, so you notice that the, the, ma the bigger the mass, the bigger the period, okay? So the proton will have a bigger period than the the, the, the proton will have a bigger period than, than what? Than the electrons, okay? All right? It's very important to understand this point, eh? And notice here, since they have the same V and the same Q and same B, the bigger mass will have bigger radius. So the proton will, be, will have a bigger radius and the electron will have a smaller radius to, for this rotational motion, okay? So let's calculate then Te over Tp, okay? Uh, if you divide, the 2 pi will cancel, the Q will cancel, the B will cancel, so you have the mass of the electron over the mass of the proton. You are left with this, because when you divide, 2 pi will be the same, Q will be the same, because electron and proton, they have the same charge, magnitude, of, K, of course, the mass uh, is not the same, of course, and B is the same, and this is the answer here. Now, if you want to put the numbers, okay, Ta over Tp, that's what he's looking for, is this is 9.1, and to power minus 31, which is the, in kilogram, the mass of the electron. And the mass of the proton is 1.67. And to power minus 27, okay, that's the, 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 that's the, 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 the mass of the proton. And if you do the correction, uh, correctly this, uh, these calculations, you get 5.1, 5.4, and to power minus 4. So the, the period of the, the electron will be less than the period of the proton, okay? By that much, okay? Okay, so uh, the period of the electron will be the period of the proton times 5.4 and to the power minus 4, okay? So that's mi minus, minus 4, okay? That's the, that's the answer here, okay? That's the answer. So the proton will have less, smaller period, okay? Smaller period. The proton will have smaller period than the, uh, the, the, uh, sorry, the electron will have, the electron will have a smaller period than the proton by this much here. That's the ratio. That's the ratio they are looking, looking for. Huh? Te over Tp is equal 5.4 and the power minus 4. Uh, it has no units because uh, this is second and this is second. They cancel out and you get the answer here without units. Thank you.